Hey Ryan. What? What kind of music do windmills listen to? They're big metal fans. Hey guys, welcome back to QFMC Conversations. <laughs> I really hope that's our intro. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, and today we are getting together to talk about Matthew 5, uh, was uh, oaths, uh, 5 started verse 33, yeah. and we're going to have a discussion. Um, if you guys want, you can reach out to us and engage in a, in a discussion too. We'd love to hear from you and hear your thoughts. Um, we always say we're not here to uh, teach, we're just having a discussion to hopefully sharpen each other. And to learn, yeah, yeah. for sure. Right. But thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, so to start, Ryan's gonna pray. All right, let's pray. God, uh, you're good. Thank you for your word, and I thank you that we can read and study and learn. Um, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us as we read and as we have a conversation. Would you be in our conversation and help us to learn something new so that we can be changed? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, uh, yeah, so Matthew chapter 5, uh, starting verse 33. You want to read or you want me to? Uh, uh, you can read. I can read. All right. You can read. So uh, I'm reading from the TNIV study Bible. The T stands for today's. <laughs> it's not much different than NIV. Mm -hmm. So verse 33 in chapter 5 says, Again, you have heard that, it's, that it was said to people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven or, or for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to simply to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Mm -hmm. So, so oaths. Yeah, oath. It's a, well, it, you go. You go. go um, I haven't really fully formed my thought yet. It, it's really talking about um, promising by something, which is not really something we do anymore. Yeah. I mean, w so I think we do it with we do it unintentionally or we do it like um we do it without knowing we do okay um be because really when it when the bible's talking about oaths they were very like they were very explicit about oaths right yeah they would say things like you know a, a god of the old testament um that the israelites always were dealing with was uh baal or baal yeah. or however you say it right so you swear so by the god you're right you say by the god of baal uh mm -hmm. may you be cursed or something like that right and well, so there's there's this there's this idea that, that the people are tethering themselves to this god because yes. they believe this god is going to do something on their behalf right well yeah that's part of it part of it is because to me it immediately jumps to um in like the Iliad and in the Odyssey in ancient Greece, you would swear by the river Styx, and the idea mm -hmm. is that which is the river in the underworld. Okay. And, and so the idea is that this is a cursed river, and if you swear by it, and you break your promise, then there are consequences. And I think the same would hold to to if you swear by you know if I swear by Zeus, if I break that promise, that means Zeus has you know ready to go to get to have. Um, to, to punish me, to, to take revenge on me for breaking my promise. Probably lightning bolts. Well, probably, <laughs> but my point is that right. it, it, it's not just a promise like, oh yeah, I'll do that. It's like saying like, hey, I'm going to keep this promise. And if I don't, may I be... Oh, that's another one. It's like, uh, Foghorn Leghorn <laughs> would say, if I'm a rooster, uh, then I, may I be struck by lightning. <laughs> and then there's lightning in the background. It's like, oh, let me think about this another way. <laughs> I have no idea what that even is. Foghorn Leghorn is no um, uh, Looney Tunes, like uh, oh. Looney Tunes. Um, it, it's like Tweety Bird and uh, Sylvester okay. Stallone. Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> Just Sylvester. Yeah. Oh, it's it's hot today. My brain's cooked. Yeah. Right. Um, it has been. It's been a warm week. It's been a warm That's week for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the the idea of oaths. I feel like this is something that um, this p portion of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, I feel like people could easily gloss over it because mm -hmm. we like we maybe don't understand the idea of an oath doesn't doesn't compute 
Um, the closest thing that we, we say explicitly, it would be like making a promise, mm-hmm. right? Um, like I promise that I'll be there at four o'clock, right? Yeah. You know, and, and there's something th- that's kind of it, but really this idea of oath is like, it's, it's, it's a little bit deeper to that than that because you make a promise to somebody, but you you also tether yourself to something or someone, yeah. right? In this case, God. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and, um, so, well, yeah. And that's what Jesus calls out is don't, don't swear by God or his throne or the earth or, uh, Jerusalem or is it yeah. driven by your own head? Right. It says basically like, don't make promises, you know, by or on these things. Right. And so like, uh, so interesting, like, uh, in the Ten Commandments, it says, uh, don't take the Lord's name in vain, mm-hmm. right? Which um, oftentimes we think of as, as just simply like swearing, yeah. right? Like your your mom or your grandma's like, hey, don't say God yeah. or like don't say Jesus, right? Because we use it, we, we would say, we think of it in terms of that, like don't take yeah. the Lord's name in vain. But really what that, what that Old Testament, uh, what that commandment is saying is like don't, don't swear by like don't make an oath mm-hmm. in God's name. Like, don't take don't it light, do that. Don't take it lightly. R- well, because here's the thing: don't, Jesus, do don't do it all. But Jesus is changing that. He says, uh, "You." It used to be said, "Don't break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord." Okay. So Jesus is actually turning it on its head and saying, "Like, hey, you've heard it said, like if you swear by God, you dang well better keep it." And Jesus is like, "No, actually." Don't swear by God at all. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Right. Which is how my my version reads it. Right. Uh, simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. Um, which I was like, because here's the thing. We, we've been talking, remember, uh, this wasn't last week for us, but last week we did the episode on adultery and divorce. Right. Um, which were really he- high standards. Yeah. Right? This is a high standard. Basically saying like, hey... The most like sincere and serious promise that you can make, everything you say is held to that standard, mm. because it, Jesus is saying you can't, we're, we're, you can't make more serious promises. You can't swear by God. So the most right. serious promises you can make is all the things you can say. Right. So like, just simply state something. Right. Mm-hmm. Say you're like. If, if we have a meeting, you agree to meet with somebody at noon, show up at noon, right? Don't be like, hey, I, I'm going to show up at noon. I swear on my mother's grave, I'll show up at noon, yeah. right? Something like that where like people say those kinds of things in jest, yeah. but people would say those kinds of things like, I swear yeah. by, by Jerusalem, I, yeah. swear, right. I swear by heaven or earth or whatever, people would... would would use that as kind of like, you know, this is what I mean. Uh, uh, I mean this very seriously, right? And Jesus is saying, like, just don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that at all. Just tell people this or that, yes or no, and just do that, yeah. right? Don't don't make promises. Don't tie yourself uh, to to God or to heaven, like, because what like. To, to turn it on its head a little bit, in my mind, what you do when you're doing that is you are, um, <laughs> it, you're putting God into a corner, especially if you swear, like if you swear by God, mm-hmm. if you say, but in, by God, by the God of the Bible, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and then you fail on that, what you've done is you've tarnished God, yeah. right? You've tarnished his name or his view in the eye of the person, right? So... So let, let's put it this way. You, you've said before, like, my hands are writing checks, my br- or my brain's writing checks, my hands can't cash. Yeah, when right? I'm playing when the drums. Playing drums. Yes, yes. All right, so when you make a promise for God, it's like, I, I can promise to do something that I am in control of, mm-hmm. but I can't promise to make God do anything. Right. Right? He's outside my control. Yeah. And so now, so now if I'm promising something by God... I'm writing checks that are coming out of God's bank, and God's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So, like... You're way outside your bounds. Sure. So, like, when I think about it, there, there are things in Scripture that are, that are promises 
for uh, their promises for Israel, for specific people, and then for all people, right? Mm. And so I think when we look to Scripture and we find things that are promises for all, then, then we can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, God has promised you this, right? That's a little bit different than saying something of like, um, I promise you that God will heal you, mm-hmm. right? So that's like, that's a little bit different. Can God heal you if you're sick? Yes, absolutely. Um, is it within his, his power and his prerogative? Sure. But will he always? No. He doesn't always heal everyone for various reasons, and um, God Mm -hmm. is outside of our thought process and our our way of of doing life, and so we don't always understand why He does what He does or what He why He leaves things undone that He could do, right? And that's that's a really that's another conversation on 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 itself. Oh, and I think it's also it's also important to chime in here and say that someone saying, "I promise God will heal you." If that is a prophetic word, I don't think there's anything intrinsically wrong in saying that it depends on where it's coming from. If you are making the promise on God's behalf, then, yeah. then there's issues there. But if you have received a prophetic word and saying, hey, God will heal you. Yeah. I, I mean... So it's interesting, though. Even in that, I feel like... I feel like there's scriptural basis for... For us to come to God in a humble state on behalf of other people, mm-hmm. pleading for him to do these things. Yes. And not being so arrogant, might I say. It might be a little bit of too strong a word, but not being so arrogant in thinking that you make God move. Mm-hmm. Because we don't make God move. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, God, God interacts with us, and he... He has a relationship with us, and, and he moves uh, on occasion when we ask. Mm-hmm. But sometimes God is doing things, and, and he doesn't do the things we ask for. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do what we, what we want him to for any number of reasons. You yeah. know, if you can find in Scripture, sometimes if you have poor motives or if you are looking for self— uh, if you're doing something out of self-righteousness— you know, these kinds of things, then, yeah, God's probably not going to give you what you ask. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's for His glory, there's good indication that, you know, God's probably going to grant your wishes. Ask and you shall receive, right? If Ask and you shall receive for godly things, not if you're asking God to win the lottery, right? Yeah. Like, the, the, so it's very interesting, all these things, right? But I, when, in terms of, like, how oaths play themselves out in today's world... I see people like online and hear people talk in, in person, um, not lately because uh, COVID, but uh, they'll say things that they'll say things that are tied to this idea of making an oath mm-hmm. that as if they're saying it that it's coming from God. And without any, like, without any real basis or grounds for them to be able to say that. Yeah. Like, and, and sometimes it's not even in, like, sometimes it's not intentional or they don't realize they're doing it. But, like, even, even in good, well-intended things, like saying, oh, God will heal you or God will, um, God will get you out of that financial hole or God will, like... I, I understand that you like you have good intentions, mm-hmm. but you need to be. I think we need to be careful when I, we I when we use that kind of language because I think that's the same. Like like I said, we don't use this the word of oath. We don't use that like, terminology, don't. but the idea I feel like is largely the same. I agree. Um, and I forgot what I was going to say. You keep talking. Sorry. <laughs> so. The, the, this idea, I think we, we need to be aware of the fact that, okay, when we're speaking to people, when we are, quote, making promises or telling them things that are going to happen, um, are we telling them things that are definitive on, that are in our control? Or are we feeding them something that might be true about mm-hmm. God and God might do it? But we don't know for sure, 
but we say it as though it's it's a it's a definitive fact, mm-hmm. right? Because I think that's where it gets you get well, onto a slippery slope, and Jesus is like, don't do that, just don't. So don't go down there. I, I would throw out here um, that there's the idea that I'm I have I've received this word from God, and I know this to be true. Like I don't need scriptural backing for this because this is a direct word from God, and it yeah. it is the basis of most cults. Um, <laughs> right, right. That, that that's a very good point. And I was actually just reading about um, mistaking. So so you follow you. Everything at the end of the day comes to assumption. Well, not assumption. How do, let me. Uh, there are certain assumptions that we have to make. Okay. For example. Um, that logic produces true results. Okay. You can't logically prove that because you're using logic. It's like it's like trying to jump into your own hands. You just <laughs> it took, okay. All right. So that that's one of those things that we just have to assume, and most people assume, and it seems to be fairly safe to assume it because we do seem to produce to produce true results through logic, but that's not the same as proof. And so there are, there's a, there's a number of these assumptions. I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but there are some assumptions we have to make. And I was just reading about how you use your assumptions to go from point A to point B to point C, and you're supposed to use logic to prove B and C off of A, your assumption. And that there are people who take conclusions and make those the assumption and say, like, this is, this is a divine word. I know this is true. Mm-hmm. And that's their starting point. That's an assumption that they don't have to prove because you can't prove cert- certain things that are that are beyond proving. Yeah. And and so yeah, that how about how about this? Have you have you ever heard this from somebody? I know what God wants you to do with your life. Have you ever heard somebody say that? I have. I don't I've, know if I've ever heard. I'm I'm sure I I've heard of people who have who have heard that said. I don't know if anyone's ever said that to me. Okay, well, I've had that said to me, and I've he- heard other people say something like, along the lines of, God wants you to do this. This is what, this is what God wants you to do. And sometimes it's in a, it's in a way, uh, like, it, I've heard it in jest. I've also heard it in very serious terms. Well, where, in serious terms, I suppose it, it depends on what this and that are. Like, sure. if I said, hey, God wants you to be honest. Okay, right. <laughs> but that, but you can you can. I have scriptural backing. You have scriptural for that. backing for that, right? And, and, and it really comes down to the application of God wants everyone to be honest, and you are part of the subset of everyone. Right, right. So you like you can get to that conclusion logically, but if somebody tells you God wants you to go work this job in this city, really, yeah, like like, and I've heard those kinds of things. I, about me and to other people that I know and and when I hear stuff like that I'm like okay so wait a minute now are you suggesting to me that you heard a prophetic word from God about me and my life or are you like just assuming because that's what you want and you're just using God as your backing to get what you want right because that's that's making an oath, swearing by God that this is what you should be doing. So, and that's that's I guess, dangerous. I, I agree, it is dangerous. I don't think we're necessarily called to not do certain things that are dangerous. I don't think the fact that something is dangerous immediately discredits it. I do agree that doing that carries a lot of weight and should not be done lightly. Um, I suppose it really depends on how much credence you give to prophetic word nowadays. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm de- trying to decide if I should share that because I actually just was talking to somebody. I guess I will share a little bit. I won't share with who, but I was talking to somebody the other day, <clears throat> and they said that a pastor said that they were going that the essentially spoke a prophetic word over them, saying like. I believe that you will be leaders in the church for for many many years, hmm. and that they were <laughs> kind of frustrated after that prophetic word because it it kind of made them feel trapped, mm-hmm. not because they were interested in you know 
satisfying this guy who said it, but because they actually did believe that either he was making it up and it doesn't carry any weight, or it really was a prophetic word and it carries a heck of a ton of weight. Sure. Um, and so that was something that they really struggled, were, were struggling with. Um, anyways, so I guess it comes down to like how much credence do you give to prophetic word nowadays? Hmm. Yeah. Well, and I guess it would depend on what uh, circle you run in. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the Free Methodist Church would uh, affirms uh, the all spiritual giftings mm -hmm. to even today. And so prophecy would be one of those. Um, uh, now all prophetic words should be um, held up against scripture. Yes. And um, also tested by by the church, by the saints. Um, and so there's there's something, there, there's some vetting of yes. prophecy, right? Yes. There needs to be... Double and triple check your work. Yeah, there needs to be something. Um, I still think that that's a... When you when you talk about prophetic words, I think that they are they happen less often than I think people say they do. I, I think I, think, I don't think they happen very often at all. I think people say they happen uh, more often than they they actually do. I would agree and, with that, and that's where I think like because here's the thing. Vote. Here's the thing. Of of course, the number of real ones is less than the total of all the ones we hear about because right. all the ones we hear about are the real ones and the fake ones. Right. So of course the real ones would be less than all of them. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, and that's that's true. I guess that's not really a hot take or a bold yeah. statement to make. But I, I think that like <laughs> hot take of today. Yeah. Almost fifty percent of people are women. Yeah. That's <laughs> Somewhere hot around fifty percent. Yeah. Hot takes. You heard it oh. here first. Almost fifty percent are women. I'm gonna get in trouble. I didn't say almost. A did I say almost around? It's around 50%. Okay, whatever. Almost around. Same, same <laughs> idea. So I think that, like, um, like your translation says, yeah, let your yes be yes, your no be no. Um, mine says simply say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the last phrase that, it said, that Jesus says in mine, anything beyond this comes from the evil one. I don't know how it reads right yeah, at the end. That's exactly the same. So... This idea Jesus is getting at that um, that when you tell people you make promises and you um, try and back it up with God or 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 your mother's grave or whatever um, is those things are coming from the the evil one yeah because um, <laughs> because in all reality what you're doing is you're you're using you're using something, an entity, um, or or a person, for in in a way that it was not intended. Yes. Right. That's that's misusing a relationship. You're borrowing that authority. Right. And that's not okay. No. Right. But and 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 this is where this is where I think like in our modern world we do this way more than we think. Mm. Right. Because we use our position. We use our power. Um, we use our um, our social status, and we borrow from things that we're a part of. Um, you know, people say, you know, well, I'm a part of the school board, or to yeah. justify making some decision that might be untoward. Yeah. Or they say, well, I'm a part of the church board, and yeah. so I can do X, Y, Z. Or, well, I'm a I'm a the, leader in this, and so the implication being that uh, I have the. The, the full authority of this board behind me that if they were all in on this decision right now that they would all agree with me yeah which is n isn't necessarily true they might not all agree with you mm -hmm. um, and then also means that now that you've taken that authority and you have to go back to them either you have to ask for their forgiveness for borrowing that authority or they have to agree th agree with you and say like yeah we gotta protect our own <laughs> yeah I do want to touch really quick I had this thought. Simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because um, it makes me think about there are no um, promises that are above. Uh, there's, not, like, there's no little promises and then moderate promises and then big promises. Like All promises are let your yes be yes and your no be no. And so I'm sitting there thinking, like, are there any 
promises in my mind that are bigger or more serious than others. And it, to me personally, yes, there's a big one, which is marriage. I, to me, that's a much bigger promise than anything else I've made in my life. Yeah. Um, but, but the scripture doesn't support that. So to me, that says that all promises are to be taken with the same amount of seriousness and severity that, that, that the marriage promise did, mm -hmm. does. So it's interesting you say that. I just glanced down at my, my notes in my study Bible. In this section, it says, The Old Testament allowed oaths except those that prof profaned the name of God, right? So that's what mm -hmm. I was talking about, like, don't take the Lord's name in vain, right? Yeah. So, that's what they're talking about. That's what that refers to. Don't make an oath connected to God. But it says Jesus would do away with all oaths in favor of always speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the bottom line here is, like, that Jesus is getting at. It's like, look, just, just tell the truth. Whether it's yes or no, whether it's good or bad, like, just tell the truth. Don't, don't swear on people's names or on your mother's grave. Just tell the truth and let that stand for what it is. Yeah. You know? And, um, yeah. And I think that that is, uh, it was true for them. It's obviously true for us because yeah. we're still humans. I think that's a good note to end on right there. I think so too. Yeah. For sure. Well, thanks for joining us here today for our conversation. If you have any thoughts on this section we read about oaths, um, uh, anything to add or comments about what we said uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or write me an email. My email's in the description. Um, and yeah, it was good to have you here. We'll see you next time. Bye.